purpose and the objective of this specific webinar is to deliver the understanding of quality function deployment tool and its application. Uh, in order for, for me to do that, I define like four objectives. One is to first, we're going to define what QFT is about. And uh, hopefully, I'll cover some of the common terms and symbols used in QFT. And I will also try to do my best to determine when and where to apply uh, QFT. And again, as I said before, I'll uh, use an example where we will apply QFT on a, on a textbook development. So QFT, again, stands for Quality Function Deployment. It is the, um, the method uh, used to select the design features of a product in a manner to satisfy the express preferences of customers. This method, which originated in Japan, also helps in prioritizing those features and the picking the most important ones for special attention further along the design processes. So you can see here, the Japanese characters for QFD are in Shitsu, which means quality features, attributes, or qualities. Kino means function or mechanization. Tenkai means deployment, diffusion, development, or evolution. So that's where the QFD is coming from. Um, there, there is a huge history about QFD in, in Japan. It started in the um, 1960s, but the, the key point I want to bring up here is that the grooves or the pioneers of QFD in the United States are uh, actually Bob King and Don Clausing. Um, and I'm not going to go through all these, you know, uh, the previous history, but I think that's what we need to remember. Again, early, like mid uh, 80s, is when Don Clausing uh, presents QFD at Goal QPC annual conference. And then Bob King uh, meets with Akao in Japan. Akao gives Goal QPC permission to translate his classroom notes and use them in Goal QPC training. In uh, January of uh, 1986, Don Closing presents QFT to Ford's quality strategy. Um, before I, uh, I like this slide really, um, or this, this actual graph uh, really well. As you can see here, it kind of uh, represents the um, how quality function deployment was used early in the product life cycle. And um, this, this example is for automotive. These two charts, the one with the grayed color and the white represents, um, the gray one is represent the US, sorry, the, the dashed line right here under the gray, is represent the US company. And this graph here represents a Japanese company. They didn't release, uh, which of the Japanese or U.S. company, but uh, regardless of which company, right, depending on the culture, uh, it, it was a, a great indicate, indication of uh, QFD's um, um, deployment. So wh why is, it this, is this important? Think about l looking at this right here. The, uh, this, this actually represents the design changes. Uh, if you are in, in manufacturing, um, either automotive, aerospace, or even service, anytime you make changes to your product or the process or service late, it's really very highly costly, okay? If you do them, early enough in the product life cycle, then you're minimizing your cost. So the difference between these two, again, this company right here, they they were there actually, and, and there's a, this x-axis is the, uh, the duration for the program life cycle. And as you can see here, it says 90% of the total changes completed 14 to 17 months prior 
to the production. And actually, lots of changes they are making here, very minimal changes during the last uh, few months before they build the job uh, number one. On the other hand, if you look at the U.S. company, they actually peaked at just before job one, and there was a second peak right after job one. So that's an indication that some, uh, you know, a tool like QFD was not considered to um, uh, to be used for uh, for their product improvement or voice of their customers or anything like that. And we're going to talk about why we're doing the benefits of QFT a little bit later on. But again, this is a great picture of comparing two, um, you know, two companies, one with QFT and one uh, without the QFT. So what is, a, what is QFT? Again, QFT is a system for translating the customer requirements into appropriate company requirements at every stage from research through production design and development to manufacture, distribution, installation, and marketing, sales, and services. QFT, as it has been defined, therefore constitutes a tool able to orient product design toward the real exigencies of the end user. In this sense, it represents an evident and a powerful tool for laying project plans in a structured and finalized manner. Normally, it is used before starting on the activities of the development, engineering, and production of new products or services. QFT was developed as a tool contributing to the attainment of Japanese quality standards in industry. Its implementation required the collaboration of all company staff from top management through the workers in all areas of company's activities. Quality control executed in such a global manner is called the company-wide quality control, CWQC. Quality function deployment therefore represents a tool aiding total quality management, enabling us to avoid or at least reduce the possibility that any essential aspect of the quality be neglected during the process of product design or during its revision. These concepts are effectively connected with the indications that managers are often prone to neglecting one or more crucial dimensions of quality during system design. In point of fact, quality is a multi-dimensional entity and its evaluation must necessarily involve all those characteristics that are necessary to represent it in its entirety. Performance, added characteristics, safety, reliability, Compliance with specifications, lifetime, after sales service, aesthetics, ecology, maintenance, economy of usage. So what is the role of QFD? As you can see in this picture here, it is QFD is illustrated in the circle of company communications. The customer requirements follow the circle of company communications and return to the custom, customer in the form of a new product. All too often, however, in this sort of word of mouth communication process within a company, we find that the customer requirements are not adequately translated in the passing from one function to another. QFT is an instrument that prevents such drawbacks by having the new products passing through the various company functions, thus contributing to improvement of the company's horizontal organization. The, we, have, we can actually talk about a lot of objectives of uh, QFT. From a strictly operative point of view, QFT is best suited to attaining these, these objectives, to define product characteristics that meet effective customer requirements. 
to assign on specially structured forms all the information deemed necessary for the development of a new product or service. To affect a comparative analysis of our product, our product performance against those of competitors. To guarantee coherence between manifest customer needs and measurable product characteristics without neglecting any point of view. To ensure that all those in charge of each process step are constantly kept informed about the relationship between the output quality of that step and the quality of the final product. To reduce the necessity of applying modifications and the corrections during advanced stages of the, uh, development because right from the start, everyone is conscious of all factors that can influence project evolution. To minimize time allotted to customer interaction, to guarantee full coherence between product planning and planning of the relative production progress processes, to increase the capability of a company to react so that any errors that could uh, stem from a faulty interpretation of priorities and objectives are kept to a minimum. To have self-explanatory documentation on the project as it evolves. To agree on specific reference documents useful for the customer as well as for those involved in drawing them up, which limit to a minimum the formulation of ideas and requests that cannot be coded and most importantly, May, uh, may not find general consensus. The QFD process begins uh, when we endeavor to pinpoint customer requirements, which are usually expressed in terms of qualitative characteristics, broadly defined as, for example, pleasing to look at easy to use, working properly, safe, long lasting, stylish, comfortable, etc. During the process of product development, customer requirements are successfully converted into internal company requ uh, requ requisites called design specifications. These specifications are generally the global characteristics of a given product, which if correctly developed, will have to satisfy customer requirements. Then the general specification of this system are translated into detailed technical specs for the subsystem or the critical parts. The use of the word part is considered particularly appropriate for those products that are assembled from various mechanical components. In any case, QFD can be applied just as successfully on other types of products and services in the most uh, disparate market sectors. Determining which operations are necessary for the manufacturing process constitutes the next step, a step often closely bound to proper, uh, prior capital investments in plants and machinery. To effectively obtain the required quality characteristics, the identified manufacturing process specifications are translated into quality control specs. So from the point of view of procedure, QFD uses a series of forms called quality tables. The philosophy governing how QFD is to be applied is that of management by objectives and the management by processes. The emphasis is placed on both what needs to be done and how it is to be done. The major component of the QFD method, again, is a matrix, as you can see here in the picture. Um, created with the customer's preferences on the rows. These are customer requirements or preferences. We also call them what's. And um, the design features selected to meet those preferences in the columns. So what's in the orange and house or design characteristics in the columns. 
the intersecting cell between a column and the row is used to record the strength of the relationship or how well the chosen feature will meet the corresponding customer preference. There are three different notations that we use. We use. They are called weak, strong, and very strong. And um, we also consider negative impact. So, and these are the symbols that we're going to use. The matrix of customer preference um, versus the design feature is topped by a triangular matrix, as you can see here in the orange. It shows how design features are related among one another. That's why we call it correlation matrix as well. So the knowledge of these relationships will help will help us alerting the designer to uh, changes that may occur in other design features while making changes to one of them. This provision, which helps in evaluating competitors and thus enables uh, a comparison of the features of the new product with those of the competitors is known as benchmarking. This enables the identification of the strengths and the weaknesses of the competitor's product. It also helps in building upon their strengths or winning a competitive edge by satisfying a need that the competitors have not addressed. And as you can see here again, it's the orange section is when, again, when we compare our design with our competitors. The matrices, when put together, look so much like the picture here of a house with, with a roof, windows, and doors, that the assembly of the matrices is called the house of quality. Okay, so what are the key benefits of uh, QFT? Well, it will give you a better product, service, or process than you would have achieved otherwise. It will give you uh, a better outcome faster than will other methods. It will typically require fewer resources. It will give definition to the design process, helping the design team to stay focused and effective, giving team members greater ability to see and understand how they contribute to the design process, as well as how to work with, um, with customers and other team members. It will also allow for easy management and peer review of design activities as they progress with graphical representation of the different sets of information, driving the design as well as the linkages between information sets. And finally, it will leave you very well positioned should you need to improve upon your results for the next generation product, service, or process. Now, as I said before, I wanted to uh, walk you through the QFD application through an example. And in this case, I picked a design in a book, a textbook. Um, it relates to uh, design a book to be used mainly by engineering professors in classes for engineering majors. So this is critical. We need to understand that. Again, the book is to be used for uh, engineering majors by the engineering professors. But then it would be desirable if the book would also be of use to quality professionals in industry to meet their training needs. An additional advantage would be if the book can be used in classes for other majors as well, such as business, mathematics, and science. Well, that's because publishers like books that appeal to as wide uh, an audience as possible. 
So the features of the book that would satisfy the preferences of the various customers must be identified and prioritized. So the first task for a design team is to identify who the customers are. Well, based on what's provided to us, the author is the planning team, and anyone who will be impacted by the design is a customer. So in that case, the professors, the students, professionals, and the publisher are the customers, and they all have their own preferences. A list of these preferences is first generated based on the experience of the author and inquiry among his colleagues and the students. The customers and their needs are shown on the left-hand side of the house of quality that I'm going to about I'm going to going to be showing to you uh, on the next slide. But before we get there, so think about <clears throat> if you are again in a service industry, manufacturing even in education, right? So remember we had what's and how's, right? It's critical that you need to understand who are your customers, that you can define what they are really looking for, what their needs are, what their wants are. And then um, the, the how is your design characteristics. In other words, the uh, uh, what we have as a base and plus what the customers want, right? Uh, how we can actually add those into our uh, design um, characteristics. So I'm going to show you here again how are our design characteristics. In this case, statistics fundamentals, statistical methods, management topics, formula derivation, latest research, computer example per chapter, Real-world example per chapter, mini projects, number of chapters per pages, number of illustrations per chapter, and simple writing style, and finally, color or the glitz and glitz. These are the design characteristics. As for what's, again, because we have four different customers, so we need to define the customer requirements for each of those customers. We're going to start with uh, professors. So what do they? What what is it that the professors want? Professor want rooted in math, be captured in the in the textbook, quality engineering body of knowledge, ra rational chapters, uh, good examples and exercises, good references, and open-ended projects. So that's the first customer, right? The professors. The second customer, students. So what do they want? Um, reader friendly, enhances knowledge, good computer use, and not expensive. Or keep working on the what's or custom requirements. The next is professionals. What do they want? They want usable tools, quality engineering, body of knowledge, no complex math, and finally, easy to read. And then the last customer was publisher. They want a wider audience, long life, and competitive. So now if we were to, oh, before we go to the next, so then we need to define the importance of each of those uh, customer wants. Um, so importance weight within the customers, between the customers, and then there is a weighted pref preferred ratings. Because we're dealing with multiple customers, that's why the importance here has um, a weighted preferred as based based on the within and between customer uh, requirements or yeah customer requirements. If we had only one customer, we would only look at the importance weight, and that's it. So here's what we have documented so far. Again, we define what and hows along with the importance. From there, the next step is to define the importance. So for professors to quality, uh, and, sorry, rooted in math, quality, engineering, body of knowledge, and so on and so forth. So the way when we give it, uh, when we provided the 
uh, the importance, they said, okay, rooted in math is three, quality engineering is three, um, uh, rational chapters is one. So, oh, by the way, the importance here rating, the, um, the requirements are supposed to add up to 10. So we're using the scale of 10. Uh, that way we will know the, um, you know, which one is more important than others. So three, three, one, two, half and a half. Uh, between the customers, we're going to use one, three, five. Um, so in this case, we say importance weight between customers, it's five. So the weighted preferred rating is actually, we have a formula that we use for that. It's actually the uh, important weight, uh, weight within the customers times importance weight between customers. So 15, 15, 5, 10, so on and so forth. Now that, and we, following the same logic, we calculated importance weight and the weighted preferred rating for every one of those requirements for each of the customers. So now we need to look at, okay, for, uh, for the sake of uh, uh, being able to visually see the picture, I took only this, the first uh, customer, professors, in comparing that with the uh, design characteristics here. So now that we know professors, uh, what they want, and now we need to build the, uh, their relationship, these wants and the design characteristic relationship. But what we're seeing here is that uh, rooted in math and statistical fundamentals, they have a strong relationship. So that's um, that's the symbol that we use for that. There's another one. So I'm just going to skip some of these. So you will see, again, using the common language, we're defining the relationship between the, uh, the customer requirements and the design characteristics. So we do that for students as well. It actually, as a matter of fact, there is a, uh, a negative impact um, on one of them. Go to the third customer, public uh, professionals, weak, um, strong, negative impact. Okay, I'm skipping some of this because again, I wanna show you the bigger picture. So this is the last um, customer. So, okay, so now if you look at this picture here, that defines again all customer requirements and how they're, how they're related to our design characteristics, okay? And we also including here three different competitors that we're gonna compare our design with theirs. So, by the way, the, through the benchmark studies, uh, we, we tend to find this information. So we, we um, you know, um, if you are the, uh, the lead on this QFD, uh, you need to find out where your com competitors are with each of these. Sometimes we, we, we buy, you know, we buy their books and then we just compare it ourselves and we come up with the ratings. And sometimes the data is readily available. Again, that depends on the service or the product that you're working with. So in this case, the information was given and it actually, uh, it was entered in here. Same thing uh, for competitor B and competitor C. Okay, from there, now that we know competitors, remember uh, we had this correlation table and in this one, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the relationship or correlation between each of these design characteristics. And the reason why we're doing it, that's because if you were to uh, have a, uh, you know, a, a design characteristic that is related to uh, another one, and if the trade-off later on is to make a decision to remove one of those design characteristics, and if that characteristic is related to another one, you may want to consider keeping that because you don't want to remove two characteristics. 
So for that reason, with for example, in this case, the team is thinking that the statistical fundamentals and the statistical methods, they are strongly correlated. And then the statistical fundamentals and the formula derivation is also very strongly um, correlated. Same thing with latest research. Then statistical methods with uh, computer example or per chapter. So now those are the four that we identify they're co uh, correlated. Again, as I said, if I needed to reduce or uh, eliminate some of these design characteristics from my textbook, I definitely want to keep the first uh, characteristic, right? Because then it is correlated with uh, two other key uh, characteristics. So if you eliminated this, then you would have impacted the other uh, characteristics. So we don't want to do that. So that's the top of the uh, house of quality. Then the bottom here, we're going to have, have, have to now determine the row score and the ranking. And again, we are using formula for that. But so the first of all, what we're doing is uh, these symbols, remember, representing a rating, 135. So uh, regardless, uh, even though it says negative impact, we don't use in the in the calculation we don't use the negative. Uh, you know, um, so it doesn't mean like we're subtracting it from the total. We still have to add up all these numbers regardless of the uh, the direction that they're going in. So this one here, for example, uh, statistical fundamentals scored uh, 184. How do we get? How did we get that? It's the weighted preferred rating times the strength of the relationship. So weighted right here. So 15 times 5 plus 15 times 3, 9 times 3, 3 times 1, and that adds up giving you uh, 184. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing and calculate the sum for every one of these design characteristics. And if you look at that, so now uh, across the uh, the among the, the contributors, contributor A has the high score. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to compare our results with the competitor A. But then now that we we know the total, we need to now determine the relative importance. Um, sorry, yeah. So what's the relative importance? Let me take you there now. It says 16%. So how we calculated that? It's actually the 184 divided by 1133. So for each of the design characteristics, we're going to determine the relative importance. And when we did that, here's the results. So the first one, the second one. So based on the results, so the next here says important design features. So we need to select which features are important. And at this point, team can decide, uh, well, how about if we use just anything that is higher, 10% uh, or higher? So that would assume four, the first four features or the characteristics. So let me show you how we fill this uh, design feature. And um, so we're going to use the top ranking features to identified with a kind of um, a hashtag sign um, for normalized scores uh, with the top most feature being identified with double hashtag mark. So the way, again, it's not one-to-one, -one, but what we're seeing here is out of the four, the most important is the second. It's this uh, statistical research, statistical. Um, so second feature is the most important, and the other three are also important. Book A rating, again, remember we said we're going to compare that with um, uh, Book A because it had the high score. Uh, book A rating is 10. I can skip that part. And for the first feature, 10 out of 10, by the way. 1 through 10. So book A's rating is 10, 10, 2, 10, 8, 7, 6. So now comparing 
hours with book 10, we can def determine the target for our new book. So if the competitor is already 10 with the first two, does it really make sense for us to be at 10? Um, yes, we can, but it would be very costly. But then I think the idea here is to find a way to be better than our competitor in some of these uh, key, uh, some of these char design characteristics. So I think the way we're looking at it is uh, looking at the third design characteristic, which is the management part of it. And we decide that, okay, we want to beat them on that one. So we're going to design our book that will have a better management. Uh, topic and then uh, the next time around it's um, uh, where is that right here that this was the mini project so what we're saying is okay our competitor is doing terrible on this so we're gonna throw more mini projects in our book to increase the sale of our product um, and again everything we do here costs money right and the team decided that these are the areas that we're going to actually make, make improvement and be better than our competitors. And in some cases, actually, we decided to be the same as our competitors. In some cases, uh, we decided that we don't need to be as, you know, as good as our competitors are, um, especially like uh, with the latest research. I don't, they realized I didn't have to, you know, we didn't have to include all these latest research in the statistical, you know, in this, in this textbook. So, from here, well, <clears throat> what's the key takeaway from this example? A simple example of designing a book was used here to describe the QFT methodology. The reader can imagine the level of details needed for a product like a refrigerator or a car. The above, well, I cannot even imagine an airplane. The above example, however, illustrated the important principles involved in using the QFD methodology for identifying the needs of the customer and a design, uh, designing a product to satisfy those needs. At the planning stage, the selection of a major design features of a product includes the selection of quality and reliability goals. The customers are asked for their quality and reliability preferences for the particular grade level of the product their needs expressed in the regard through through past complaints are also gathered suitable design features are then incorporated into respond to these needs a basic understanding of the principles of reliability is needed for a design engineer and the other members of the planning team to understand the customer needs in this respect and to be able to respond to them about this topic will not be covered as part of this webinar. 